The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey is Peter Jackson's triumphant return to Middle-earth after nine years of absence, telling the story of a group of dwarves venturing to reclaim their home from a mighty dragon with the help of a wizard and an unlikely Hobbit hero, Bilbo Baggins. It feels great to be back in Middle-earth. I mean, just the way New Zealand is shot is just marvelous like before. Um, I forgot just how much of an impact this world had on me until some familiar music played near the beginning of the film, and it actually brought a tear to my eye. Uh, a very manly, nerdy tear. I saw it in 3D, and I thought it was great. I'm usually not a fan of 3D, but um, it was never jumping out. It was never trying to impress, it's never trying to impress you. It's just giving the movie depth. And that's how it should be used. Because I never had a problem with brightness and it really did help pull me into the world. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this since I'm a film major, but The Hobbit makes the case that maybe in the near future 3D can be the superior format. The music is great. It has, you know, that epic fantasy feel um, all throughout. And it does reuse a lot of tunes from Lord of the Rings, which I hope they dial back in the next two films. But for this film, it does do a good job of kicking up some nostalgia. One complaint I've heard a lot about The Hobbit is that the dwarves aren't really memorable. And yeah, while they serve their purpose and there isn't, you know, like a bad performance and they're all likable, I really couldn't tell you much about each one individually. Um, which, you know, I really could with uh, the Fellowship in Lord of the Rings. So I hope they develop these characters more through the next two films. Uh, just, you know, as they get more screen time. The dwarf I really liked was Thor in Oakenshield. Uh, he's the leader of the company. And I love how he's kind of like the inverse of Aragorn. Um, Aragorn is forced to be, you know, he's he wants to be just this wandering warrior and he's forced to be king. Whereas Thorin is, he want, I mean, Thorin wants to be a king. He wants to be king, but he's kind of forced to be this wandering warrior. And um, he's, he's an awesome fighter and a good leader, good performance. And he has an epically tragic backstory that I really liked. <laughs> e. McKellen is the perfect Gandalf. He is Gandalf. I don't know what else to say. Move on. Oh, and Christopher Lee's voice deserves an Oscar. Andy Serkis has an incredible last scene portraying Gollum, uh, which I think is actually a much stronger scene than any uh, individual scene from Lord of the Rings. And he also looks great. I mean, almost a decade of technological advancements really shows here. I was worried that Bilbo would be too much like Frodo, and I think a lot of people agree with me. Frodo was just a little too weak in a way. Uh, he was directed that way. I don't blame Elijah Wood at all. I think he was directed and written that way. Just a little too weak. Sam kind of became the real hero. I'm not really sure if that was the way it should be, uh, but this isn't the case for Bilbo. Martin Freeman plays off Bilbo as very likable and uh, relatable, and he does a great job of more or less portraying how the audience would react to this, you know, these these situations, uh, but with some, you know, extra bravery that most people wouldn't have thrown in. And uh, he doesn't come across as weak at all, ju just vulnerable, which, you know, he should. He should come across vulnerable. This actually helps out the film a lot. I think Bilbo especially made the entire, you know, company feel uh, more vulnerable. Sure, Frodo was unskilled, as unskilled and out of his element as uh, Bilbo is here, but he was surrounded by a king, you know, a captain of Gondor, a prince, an elven prince. I never really felt like he was in danger at all. In The Hobbit, though, uh, not even all the dwarves are warriors. A lot of them aren't. So it makes even small groups of enemies uh, a legitimate threat. Because of this, there are some incredibly intense um, action scenes, especially later on in the movie. I also think that The Hobbit does a really good job with the lore, with its lore. Um, we get a great background on the dwarves and how they lost their mountain at the beginning. Um, and a few battles that take place after that. I love how finally goblins aren't just boogeymen. Boo, 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 boo. They, they talk, they have civilization. They're just a really savage race. But they're a race nonetheless, which makes it, you know, a little more interesting. The biggest difference between The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings is The Hobbit is much more fantasy than Lord of the Rings. That doesn't really make sense, but let me explain. Lord of the Rings is fairly gritty and combat's pretty brutal and it's just overall relatively uh, realistic whereas The Hobbit through um, a lot of use of CGI and kind of stuff like that it's it's just it comes across more fantastic a little more out there and the battle sequences are still stellar but they are certainly less real than Lord of the Rings and of course all these things this new tone this lighter tone in a way, it all makes sense because in the end, The Hobbit is a children's book. Whether or not you like this tone or not, 
it does let The Hobbit stand out as its own trilogy. It feels much different than Lord of the Rings. And I think that would have been The Hobbit's worst crime if it was just like Lord of the Rings, but not as good. This lets it stand out as its own entity, an entity that deserves to exist and be watched. I'm actually quite upset at the at the lower than expected critical response for The Hobbit. Um, the biggest complaint I saw, like everyone um, said, it's too slow. And while yes, a lot of the scenes are dragged out, and sometimes to an annoying level, and the whole movie just reeks of, we have to do three films with this story, The Two Towers is the highest rated critically of the Lord of the Rings trilogy on Rotten Tomatoes. So you're telling me that The Hobbit is getting panned for being slow, and yet Merry and Pippin's abysmally boring, repetitive, and obnoxious scenes with the Ents get a free pass? Seriously? So yes, while I noticed this, and while I do think it's, you know, a pretty significant problem with the film, in the end, I love being in Middle-earth. So, I can't complain about it that much. The Hobbit An Unexpected Journey is an excellent film and easily gets a thumbs up. I know the vast majority of you were planning on doing this already, but I highly suggest that you go see it. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the next two films because this really is an adventure that I can't wait to continue.